Hello again, and as many of you know, my name is Robert, and uh, I am the recovery guy. And so, welcome back. Uh, if this is your first time watching one of our video segments, we're glad to have you with us. We really hope, no matter where you're at in the spectrum of your personal recovery, and regardless of what that recovery is over, I primarily speak to you in terms of um, uh, alcoholism, drug addiction. Uh, but you know, I came to the program of Alcoholics Anonymous through the back door of Gamblers Anonymous um, because I'd become a compulsive overeater and bulimic within my alcoholism and drug addiction. I also began going to um, Overeaters Anonymous. Matter of fact, I was still struggling with bulimia uh, 18 months into my recovery for alcohol and drugs. Uh, and then even the gambling went away. And, and over the years, I've learned how to use the, the principles and the guidelines that are set down in uh, the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous and the first 164 pages of recovery and, and apply that to my overall life to get as much wellness, as it were, uh, as possible. And I hope you find the same thing. Uh, one of the things that is consistent with all 12-step programs is uh, only usually the first step is interchanged with respect to uh, the substance, uh, what we're addicted or compulsive toward. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. And one of the things that I have found is regardless of the baggage that we bring in or the compulsions or addictions, uh, if we're willing to apply these steps and the principles that accompany the steps, uh, we can recover. We can even uh, get well. Uh, I like to tell people that I am a happy, grateful, recovered alcoholic. Uh, I believe that it is something that's available to us all. The reason the big book was originally written uh, in 1936 was to show us what the original 100 did, uh, which is recover from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. And to show us how they did it was precisely why they wrote the book. So in this particular segment called Random Thoughts, I just jotted some random things down that I've heard, that I've come across, uh, uh, in meetings that people that I sponsor or even my sponsor has has brought up and, and we've discussed these and I've given them uh, some thought. So I'm just going to go through the list and share them with you and just chat a little bit uh, on each one. The first one, which is I think the most important, um, is recovery. You know, we come in so broken, so shattered, we are in pieces on so many different levels, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, even physically for many of us because the alcohol and the drugs have worn us down and we're really quite unhealthy, again, in a number of different categories, uh, especially even the physical. We do way too many drugs, we do far too much alcohol, uh, and it consumes us and so we stop taking care of the essentials in all of those areas. So to know that I can recover, that even in the beginning, uh, as a newcomer, uh, obviously it takes a while to come into that position of recovery as we work the steps and apply those principles into our life. But knowing that recovery was something that was waiting for me was really important and it was sort of like the carrot uh, in front of me as I continued to walk toward recovery, toward that carrot, it was always right there before me. And it was something that I wanted because it was something that I saw in others. I, I was so fortunate to get sober in Las Vegas and, and uh, a lot of times uh, people would ask me when I, I'd gotten sober in uh, 1986 and then in, uh, later on in 1987, I relocated back to Southern California and ended up going to the uh, Fullerton Olano Club. When I raised my hand as someone from being from out of town and I told them I was from Las Vegas, one of their first things they said was, how did you get sober in Las Vegas? And I was still quite naive at the time and hadn't been to any outside meeting before. I'd never been to a meeting outside of Las Vegas in my year and a half of recovery, a sobriety as it were. And, and my question to them was, well, 
how'd you get sober here? And they told me, and I thought, you know, that's that's how we get sober in Las Vegas. And it was and it was great for me because no matter where I go, recovery is the same. The plan of recovery is the plan of recovery. And the sooner I believe it can be for me, the better off I am. Which leads me into uh, my next one, which is the challenge of being a newcomer. When you're a newcomer to the program of recovery, I tell people this over and over again, the only thing as a newcomer you need to do is show up. Hopefully you've showed up without a drink or a drug, but even if you drank or used, show up again, and then show up again, and show up again. The greatest challenge for a newcomer to accomplish is showing up into a meeting. Because I believe that it's the, the meetings that newcomers attend and the exposure that they get with people who have recovered or who are working the plan of recovery toward their being recovered is exactly where that newcomer needs to be. You know, it says if you want what we have and are willing to go to any lengths to get it, then you are ready to take certain steps. You know, and as a newcomer, that's really all you need to do. You need to show up, hopefully without a drink or a drug, and you need to begin to stay. One of the challenges we had when we were out there ripping and running is that we were a little bit of everywhere. We were never in one place because we weren't welcome in one place for very long, even with the circles that we drank and used in because everything was contingent on having the supply. And when the supply got low, the water, it's like fishing. You know, if, 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 the, if the fishing hole starts to run dry, we go to another fishing hole. We don't stop fishing. Uh, in the same way with alcohol and alcoholics and drug addicts, we don't stop drinking or using. We just go find another place to, to drink or use or to make our feel good feel good. But as a newcomer, just stick around. No matter how hard it is to hear some of the things you're going to hear, just stay. That's all we want you to do. Stay and understand step one. Step one is critical for a newcomer, that we admit we were powerless over alcohol or drugs or food or gambling or, or pornography, whatever our addiction is, and that our life had become unmanageable. If you can just stay as a newcomer, keep coming back, right? Keep coming back. It works if you work it. And you work it one of the ways by just coming back to meetings, letting us love you until you can learn how to love yourself. The next thing I want to just mention to you is the importance of sharing. You know, it says in the preamble that we, we share our experience, strength, and hope with each other. You know, I heard this a long time ago and it was simply profound. And it's we are only as sick as our secrets. You know, I came into recovery and I was ashamed. I... I couldn't believe that I had done some of the things that I had done to people that I loved and cared for so much. But you know, when we drink or use, all bets are off. All bets are off. My intentions don't matter because drinking and using warps and changes and, 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 and corrupts my intentions because my actions become completely different. And my intentions over here don't even resemble my actions over there because drugs and alcohol begin to uh, determine what my actions are regardless of the depth of the conviction of my intentions. So we need to share these things. You know, maybe if you're not comfortable sharing them uh, with the group, you know, pay attention, listen, find if there's someone that you can trust on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And, and give them a little bit at a time. You don't have to spill the whole beans. You don't have to give your complete history or you take an inventory of yourself with that person. But you know, maybe share something small and trust the process and, and see what they say, see what their reaction is. You know, I was very guilty because I was uh, such a bad father and I abandoned my wife and my children. And I needed to share that with someone. Don't be afraid to share, you know, I was afraid that if you knew everything about me, the things that I did, the things that I thought, where I went, how I put 
myself above everyone, I thought I'd be the first person in the history of recovery that you would ask not to come back. But I was amazed. I was amazed when the first time I shared one of those deep, dark secrets and people came up to me after the meeting and said, you know, man, thanks for sharing. I remember doing that. I remember being that person or man, I've wanted to share something like that and you really gave me the courage to share that. So when we share, we're, we're helping ourselves and we're helping others as well. Meetings, man, meetings are so important. To this day, 31 years at the time of this video, over 31 years I've been clean and sober. And I still enjoy going to meetings. My reason for going to meetings is a little different today than it was back then, but I still get the same and even more out of a meeting. You know, today I go to a meeting to primarily to share what's going on in my life and look for the opportunity for that newcomer or that person who's been around a while and they're still struggling in some areas. And I really want to make myself available and I can do that by going to meetings. You know, but I remember when I was brand new, <laughs> I was unemployable. No one, no one would, would hire me at the time. So really the only place for me to be was at a meeting. And I took full advantage of that. And I learned so much in meetings. And that's where the fellowship resides. That's where the fellowship comes together and congregates and begins sharing all the truths and all the victory and all the heartache and the pain and the opportunity uh, and the encouragement. It's where we share that we're happy, joyous, and free, that we have recovered from this seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Never underestimate the power of a meeting. I've known many people, and I was one of them, that were on the verge of drinking and using, but we decided to go to one more meeting. And you know what? Because of that meeting, we're clean and sober today. And I hope you go to meetings, and I hope you see the power, and I hope you see the opportunity to be helped, and the opportunity to help. Another area that's really important, I think, is sponsorship. You know, Jack F. is my sponsor, and he just celebrated 43 years of sobriety last week, and I'm so proud that he is my sponsor. But you know what? I'm so grateful that he is my friend. You know, today Jack and I, we have a completely different relationship than we did in the beginning. It's no less important, it's just different. I still rely on Jack, but on different things, um, and, and none of them is quite as urgent or tragic because my world is not falling apart around me. Uh, but in the beginning, you know, we need that guide. We need that one person that we can trust, who's, who's walked the steps, who has what we want, who's living the kind of life and having the kind of peace and joy and satisfaction that I wanted for my life. And we need that guy to hold us by the hand and walk us through the steps of recovery that we can have what they have. And sponsorship is friendship. They walk us through some challenging times as we seek to understand the steps and to walk through the steps and to perform them to the best of our ability that we can then recover and have the opportunity to help others. You know, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about today is the concept of God. Today, my relationship with God has grown so much in terms of my understanding of this power that's greater than me and, and how he has everything to do with my success and my sobriety. You know, in the beginning, and it's even why they have a chapter to the agnostic because so many of us struggle with the concept of God. And then we have to turn our will and our life over to the care of that God. And it, it even grows and increases. In the beginning, we just have to believe that there's a power greater than us that could restore us. Then we have to be willing to turn our will and our life over to the care of that God. Then we have to trust him with our deepest and darkest secrets. And then in six and seven with defects of character and shortcoming, you know, we have to trust him to remove those things and to help us uncover them and explore more. And through the steps and, 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 and even in step 11, where we daily 
sought through prayer and meditation to improve that conscious contact. And then in 12, after a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, God is, is, is permeates himself through directly through eight of the 12 steps of recovery. It's been my belief over the years that the 12 steps of recovery aren't designed to teach me how not to drink or use. The 12 steps, certainly eight of the 12, are directly designed to show me and introduce me to a God of my understanding that I can trust, that I can share with, that I can, that I can uh, put my faith and hope in to give me what I want, which is freedom from the bondage of self. And the sooner I get there, the sooner my desire, my need, my, my temptation to drink or use just gets removed. God is the solution. And we start when we start living in the solution instead of the problem, it says that the, the, the problem goes away really of itself. And that's what I want and that's what I have found. My message to the newcomers, sharing, sponsorship, meetings, and most importantly, God, those are my random thoughts for you today. My name is Robert. I'm the Recovery Guy. Thank you for joining us.